Welcome back, dear listeners, to our business-focused episode where we discuss Amazon's labor unrest and layoffs, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF anticipation and valuation cutbacks, Galleria Karstadt Korfhoff's insolvency crisis, Citigroup's strategic overhaul led by CEO Jane Fraser, the controversy surrounding Mark Zuckerberg's Hawaiian cattle ranching, Nasdaq market movements, the unfolding post office scandal in the UK, SAP's latest legal settlement and policy changes, as well as Tesla and Elon Musk's latest whirlwind of news, all ahead on our show today. Welcome back, dear listeners. Today on Amazon Roundup, we begin with a look into the current labor turmoil as workers at a new facility in Birmingham are gearing up to strike over wages, signaling a demand for a fair share amidst the tech behemoth's financial success. Simultaneously, reports suggest that job cuts are sweeping through various departments, with Prime Video, MGM Studios, and Twitch feeling the sting as several hundred positions are eliminated. These layoffs are a disheartening reflection of the economic challenges companies are facing or possibly strategic adjustments within Amazon itself. In corporate news, it's a period of contrasting fortunes. Despite the job reductions casting a shadow, the retail and tech giant has introduced Amazon Q, a promising slack gateway poised to revolutionize professional and business communication and productivity. With Amazon significantly exceeding financial expectations in the fourth quarter of 2022, it continues to demonstrate remarkable resilience and efficiency unlike many of its competitors. Additionally, there are some unsettling murmurs regarding Amazon's approach to workforce reduction, details of which remain sparse, but are certainly worrying, and will keep you posted on any new developments. That's all for our Amazon News Roundup. Stay with us for more insights into global happenings. We'll return shortly after a brief intermission. Welcome back to the BlackRock News Hour, your trusted source for the latest updates and insights. Here's a roundup of today's key stories. Foremost, in a sobering sign for the US economy, a growing roster of major companies have announced significant workforce reductions going into 2024. These companies, which includes several industry giants, are grappling with various economic challenges and are trimming their staff in a bid to streamline operations. The resulting job losses raise concerns about the potential ripple effects on the broader economy. Meanwhile, in an exciting development for investors, the SEC has approved Bitcoin spot ETF applications, including one from BlackRock. The landmark decision has propelled Bitcoin's value to an exhilarating $46,079. The investment community is abuzz with anticipation as BlackRock is set to launch its iShares Bitcoin ETF tomorrow, backed by a substantial $2 billion commitment from the company itself. In contrast to the buoyant cryptocurrency market, BlackRock has critically re-evaluated the value of EdTech Titan Bijus, cutting its valuation by 95%, to just $1 billion. This drastic revision reflects a potential shift in the edtech industry's landscape and may suggest larger trends at play. Lastly, the company's acquisition of global infrastructure partners for a staggering $12.5 billion highlights BlackRock's latest strategic advancement and its growing influence in the global market. The acquisition, which is set to generate a considerable windfall for global infrastructure partners' founders, is likely to have wide-reaching effects within the industry. We will continue to monitor these stories closely and provide you with the latest news and analyses. Don't miss our deeper discussions on these topics later in the program as we delve into the implications and outcomes of these significant events. Stay with us. Podcast theme music fades out. Welcome back to the show, dear listeners. In today's news bulletin, we delve into a developing story taking center stage in Germany's retail sector. On the brink, Galeria Karstadt Korfhoff's financial woes persist. The iconic department store chain, Galeria Karstadt Korfhoff, is grappling with financial turbulence, having filed for insolvency for the third time, a move that reverberates through the commercial industry and casts a shadow over its substantial workforce and devoted customers. In the aftermath of the parent company Cigna's bankruptcy, Galleria Karstadt Korfer finds itself in a precarious position, 
amplifying the sense of urgency for the preservation of approximately 15,000 jobs at risk nationally. This pressing concern is palpable in Munich, where the local outlet is confronting the immediate consequences of Sigma's collapse, as well as in Chemnitz, where the fate of employees hangs in suspense. With the potential shuttering of more stores, Germany's last core department store chain faces a contraction that could shake the traditional retail market to its core. Enter Stefan Dimkos, the newly appointed provisional insolvency administrator, charged with guiding Galeria Karstadt Korfar through these choppy waters. His leadership is critical as he bravely accepts the daunting challenge of steering the company away from the brink of economic failure. We will be monitoring this story closely and providing you with updates as they emerge. Our thoughts are with the affected employees and loyal patrons during this trying time. Stay tuned, after the break, we'll convene with specialists to dissect the wider repercussions of this upheaval for the retail sphere and the economy as a whole. Podcast theme music fades in. Commercial break. Podcast theme music fades out. Citigroup CEO, Jane Fraser, has initiated a strategic overhaul, taking decisive measures to steer the bank towards greater efficiency and better cope with the industry's financial headwinds. In a dramatic move to streamline operations and improve returns, which have lagged behind its competitors, Citigroup plans to cut 20,000 jobs. While this decision is seen as crucial for the bank's future, it also carries substantial impact on its workforce and significant costs. The expected severance and reorganization expenses are estimated to soar to around $1 billion. As the bank embarks on this pivotal restructuring, industry observers are closely monitoring Citigroup's performance and the effectiveness of Fraser's leadership during this transformative period. In the latest meta news generating significant buzz, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg is under heavy fire for his recent foray into livestock ranching on the island of Kauai in Hawaii. Known predominantly for his Silicon Valley tech empire, Zuckerberg's venture into raising luxury beef cattle at his sprawling Hawaiian estate has been met with sharp criticism for being seen as irresponsible and detached from the local community's needs. Critics contend that Zuckerberg is missing an opportunity to deploy his vast resources towards sustainable practices that would support local agriculture and benefit Hawaii's environment, instead of engaging in what is perceived to be a vanity project. Their concerns underscore the larger environmental implications of cattle ranching, such as greenhouse gas emissions and land degradation, and feed into the contentious issue of billionaire land ownership in Hawaii a topic that intertwines with sensitive matters regarding land rights and the interests of native Hawaiians. This ongoing controversy highlights the delicate intersection of private endeavors and societal scrutiny, particularly when such traditional and ecologically impactful operations are controlled by tech moguls. We will remain vigilant in tracking this controversial story as it continues to unfold in the picturesque pastures of Kauai. Theme music fades in host, welcome back to the Market Pulse, your go-to source for everything happening on Wall Street and beyond. As we continue our coverage of Nasdaq News, Ica Holdings has caught the eye of Wall Street analysts with a moderate buy rating, demonstrating a cautiously optimistic outlook from experts in the semiconductor capital equipment industry. In the animal health sector, Petco Health and Wellness Company Incorporated the go-to retailer for pet needs, maintains a neutral stance with a hold rating from brokerage firms. Switching to business services, Nuke Business Services Corporation, known for its financial and business solutions, has piqued the interest of income-seeking investors by declaring a $0.34 cents quarterly dividend for its 5.50% notes due in 2026, trading under Nukes. In pharmaceuticals, May Pharma Incorporated holds a steady course with a hold recommendation from analysts who focus on its cancer therapy developments. Concern arises at Five Below Incorporated, where William Blair foresees a drop in FY 2025 earnings per share, signaling a cautionary note for investors of the discount store chain. Conversely, Record Systems Incorporated, which specializes in AI-driven solutions and software, receives a vote of confidence from Northland Capnc analysts, 
who have raised their earnings forecasts for FY 2023, suggesting a brightening outlook for the company. Lastly, in the energy field, Epsilon Energy Limited is experiencing a lift in investor sentiment as indicated by an 11.2% decrease in short interest during December, hinting at increased optimism for the company's future. This concludes our latest roundup from the Nasdaq. Stay tuned for further insights and updates right here on the Market Pulse. Theme music fades out. Commercial break jingle. End segment. In a significant development within the ongoing post office scandal, former CEO Paula Venels has announced that she will be returning her CBE, amidst a growing number of wrongful prosecutions of post office staff linked to the Horizon computer system. Venels, who has been central to the controversy, cited the profoundly negative impact on countless lives as the IT scandal continues to unfold. The heart of the scandal lies in the post office's Horizon system which falsely reported financial discrepancies, leading to the incorrect conviction of several sub-postmasters for theft and fraud. With more than 100 individuals now identified as potential new victims, they join others seeking justice for the hardship suffered due to the erroneous allegations rooted in software errors. As the crisis worsens, there has been a surge in national attention and public outcry, including calls for pardons for the affected postmasters. A former postmistress from Walsall has provided a particularly distressing account of her experience, detailing mental health challenges and an attempt at suicide as a result of the false charges. Despite denials of misconduct by a post office investigator in the Horizon inquiry amid accusations of severe investigative practices, victims like a former sub-postmistress continue to demand accountability. Some of these former workers are still grappling with the consequences, living in fear after losing their livelihoods due to the compromised IT system. The public and the victims' shared outrage amplify the pressure on the post office as the investigation resumes, revealing deeply rooted systemic failures and false convictions that have shaken public trust. Calls for reparations and a thorough examination of leadership's role in the scandal underscore the severity of the crisis. Our coverage will persist as we monitor the fallout of this controversy, and provide further updates on the inquiry's progress and outcomes, including potential policy changes and reparations for those affected. In the latest SAP Bulletin, we explore recent developments that have significant implications for the global software leader. SAP has unexpectedly pulled back on its plan to offer paid paternal leave, a decision likely influenced by a new proposal from the German government to implement a two-week paid leave for new parents. Simultaneously, SAP is addressing a serious legal matter by settling for 2.2 billion rand and an added penalty of 750 million rand in South Africa after assuming responsibility for corruption-related accusations. This restitution underscores SAP's effort to rectify past missteps and its dedication to upholding ethical business practices and adhering to legal standards. We will keep you informed as we further analyze the effects of SAP's policy revisions and the repercussions of its legal settlement on its workforce, investors, and the wider technology sector. Stay tuned for ongoing coverage. Welcome back, listeners. We've got a slew of Tesla updates for you, all centering around its high-profile CEO, Elon Musk. To start, Musk has openly discussed his hesitancy to continue as CEO revealing a rare glimpse into his emotional investment in his leadership roles and offering a candid insight into the personal challenges he faces. Simultaneously, concerns are brewing over Musk's personal conduct, with troubling reports of drug use that could spell risk for Tesla's board and investors, underscoring his sometimes unpredictable approach to leadership. The company is also proactively responding to the growing clout of the United Automobile Workers, UAW, by revising its strategies. These changes, which include raising U.S. factory workers' wages, suggest Tesla is seeking to appease workers and counter the UAW's influence, hinted at being a preemptive move against unionization efforts within their facilities. Controversial remarks by Musk about black people's IQ and diversity have ignited a firestorm of criticism, 
resulting in a significant advertiser retreat that threatens the company's advertising revenue streams. Amidst this turbulent landscape, Musk is looking to tighten his grip on the company by pursuing a 25% voting share in Tesla, a play that would solidify his sway over its strategic direction. We'll keep an eye on these developments and deliver the latest insights and analyzes. So keep it locked here for more on these unfolding Tesla stories. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and remember to join us next week for another insightful episode of our weekly business series. Until then, take care and keep thriving.